Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cheyenne Chaplin. I'm incredibly excited to be able to share with you all today a story that has been in the making in the Smith Laboratory here at the University of Pennsylvania for many years, and in fact, is still a story that is still ongoing. And the title of that story is CD4 Memetics, a key to lock out HIV-1 viral entry. Now, right now across the globe, there are almost 38 million people who have been affected with the disease, the vast majority of whom reside in Africa, with Southeast Asia and America being the second and third most populous regions of infected individuals, respectively. Although 38 million is an astoundingly large number, encouragingly, 62% of those currently living with the disease are receiving some form of treatment. However, it is incredibly important that I stress right now that this treatment is not a cure, nor is this, can this treatment be used as a preventative measure to help those who are at a higher risk for contracting the disease be able to stop, get, be able to not get the disease. So it goes without saying that there is a need for a drug or a vaccine that would be able to prevent the onset of HIV-1 infection. For over the last decade, our group's strategy and the strategy of our team of collaborators has been to target the HIV-1 viral envelope, which is implicated in the initial onset of HIV-1 infection. However, that begs the question, what is the HIV-1 viral envelope? The viral envelope is a structure which decorates the surface of the HIV-1 virus. You could think of this structure as being akin to what a flower would look like. And this flower has two main components. The first component is a glycoprotein called GP120, which makes up the petals of the flower. And the second component is glycoprotein GP41, which acts as the stalk. And this stalk is actually what anchors the viral envelope to the surface of the HIV-1 virus. Now, this flower also has two main um, forms or shapes, if you would like to think about it. It has this closed state here, which I've depicted on the slide, and it also has an open state where the petals of the flower have unfurled. And now that I've put that mental image of a flower in your mind, I want you to throw that image away. For the rest of the talk, I would like for you to consider the two states and confirmations of the envelope that I've shown here as being akin to the states of a lock. For example, the top closed form being a locked padlock, and the bottom form being the open, unlocked version of the uh, padlock. And as you can see on these slides, I've noted a type of padlock which requires a key in order to go from the closed lock state to the open, unlocked state. And much like the padlock on the screen, the viral envelope also requires a key in order to be opened, and that key are the T cells within your immune system, more specifically, the CD4 receptors that populate your T cell, the surface of your T cells. Now consider this very rudimentary cartoon depiction of a T cell. The CD4 receptor that I've alluded to decorates the surface of the T cell, and although I have only shown one CD4 receptor, please note that there are many that populate the surface of the T cell. The T cell itself can be thought of as the head of the key, whereas the CD4 receptor make up the teeth of the key. And the teeth of the key are the, actually the more important bit because that's what actually interacts within the lock's inner mechanisms to take you from the closed state to the open state. Now, when CD4 binds to, your, uh, to the viral envelope, it causes the envelope to change shapes from that closed form to that open form. When the envelope opens up, it exposes additional binding sites within the envelope that need to be bound to additional T cell receptors that are not CD4. And this is what causes the cascade of events that eventually leads to HIV-1 entering the host cells. However, if the virus is unable to interact with these additional receptors, then the virus remains in that open, yet inactive state, and that inactive state is quickly cleared from the body. So that begs the question, can we chemically build, can we synthesize a type of molecule that is able to open up that envelope, yet leave it in that inactive state so it can quickly be cleared from the system? And as you may have already guessed, the answer to that question is yes. So enter now the CD4 memetics, 
we can consider natural CD4 as our blank key, as our starting point. We know what type of action we want to induce within the envelope. We now just need to find a small molecule, a small chemical substance that is able to elicit the desired action. So after many years of searching and many years of synthesis, Debnath and coworkers at the New York Blood Bank arrived at the early CD4 memetics. However, I want you to take a look at the teeth of this key. Notice that they're fairly symmetrical. The key's teeth are fairly simple for a simple lock. The HIV-1 viral envelope is not a simple lock. So we need to be able to fine tune the teeth, make them more intricate. So we do that by playing around with the chemical structure, with the shapes, adding new groups, adding variability at different positions. And we get better and better keys, more and more intricate keys. The current lead key from the Smith Laboratory is BNM3170, the structure of which is depicted here. This CD4 memetic has micromolar potency against multiple strains of HIV. And not only that, we have exciting biological data that shows that if you take our compound and inject it into the vagina of monkeys and then challenge those monkeys with a primate-specific strain of HIV through the same route, we are able to help those monkeys resist the infection. And we're not just challenging them once, we're challenging them three different times with the disease. And we're able to protect them for up to 18 weeks. So that's a pretty good key, right? But we wanna make an even better key. So the BNM3170, which is our current lead, possesses this endonone scaffold. And this scaffold is incredibly attractive to chemists because this is able to be varied at multiple different positions along the ring, including the two, three, five, six, and seven position. To date, our laboratory has synthesized more than 85 CD4 memetics, more than 85 intricate detailed keys that possess this core endonone architecture. Due to proprietary reasons, I'm not able to divulge the exact structures of all those different keys, but we are working on a publication that encompasses all of those structures and all of that data, so keep your eyes peeled for that if you are so inclined. My own personal work has focused on adding variability, oops, I'm sorry, has added, has looked at adding variability to the two position, and now my focus is looking at a dye substitution pattern with substitutions at both the five and the seven position. And with that, I hope that I have been able to convince you, even just a little bit, that CD4 memetics are indeed a key to the future of HIV treatment and prevention. And with that, I would like to thank our funding agencies, our large team of collaborators, and of course, you for your time and attention. Thank you.